is talking about calling using your mouth. Glory to God. Well, I'm so thankful. The church I got saved in wasn't quiet. Glory to God. Oh, they taught me how to get to the Lord. They taught me how to get heaven to come down and lavish my life with nothing but goodness. Well, you see, your Bible says you have to call. Now listen, listen to me. How did Paul know this? When he got saved, God sent a disciple and told Paul, you call on him. Well, Paul knew how rich he was to him. Paul got saved. Paul got healed. Paul got filled. And Paul got called in the ministry. Right there, when he accepted the Lord and was told to call upon him, God lavished it. Between the power of the mind and the power of the spirit, we can walk in perpetual victory. We can have a victory after victory, after victory, through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Notice, please, Romans chapter 10. Your Bible says concerning Paul, before he became the Apostle Paul, he was a very hideous, wicked, wretched man. He was so wretched, he committed himself to killing the saints of the Most High. He, he committed himself to murdering, slaughtering the people of God. He disturbed Jesus so much Jesus had knocked him down to the ground. Jesus had knocked him down. And in fact, Jesus blinded Paul. Paul went blind from that moment because Jesus had had enough. Well, when Paul was down by the hand of God, now please listen, out of his mercy, he sent a disciple called Ananias to Paul. And the Bible records in Acts chapter 22, when Ananias came to Paul, Ananias said to Paul, call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Paul did. This hideous, wretched man, because he was knocked down and humbled now, Obey the advice of this disciple. Ananias told Paul to call upon the name. Well, evidently, Ananias knew God was rich to all who called, even one as wicked as Paul. And so when Paul, listen, when Paul began to call, he knew who Jesus was because when Jesus knocked him down, Paul said, who art thou? And Jesus said, I am Jesus, you know. Now Ananias has told Paul to call his name. And when Paul began to call, this wicked, wretched murderer, he got saved. He got killed. He got filled. And he got called into the ministry. Well, you see, because God is rich to all who call. Paul called upon his name, and not only did he get saved, he also got healed. He also got spirit filled. And he also got called into ministry. Now listen, Paul realized that was a result of him calling upon the name. So throughout his writings, 
based upon his own experience, he always encouraged believers to call because he saw what calling upon the name did for him. Hallelujah. And Paul knew if Jesus can be rich to me, he can be rich to anybody who will call. Oh, y'all listen to me. Hallelujah. Now, I'm so thankful, and I say this all the time, and I got to say it one more time. I'm so thankful for the church I got saved in because they taught me how to call on the Lord. They taught me how to open my mouth and call upon Jesus. And it's been my experience that he's rich unto all who call. Because he's been rich to me. He's favored me greatly. But I know a major part or reason for his richness to me it's because I was taught to call on him. I was taught early in my Christian life to spend time calling upon the name. Are you all here? Now again, notice Romans 10. We're going to take a journey now and I'm going to be moving quick. Hallelujah. Look at verse 9. Notice Paul said that if. You see, everybody may not decide to do it. So there's a qualifier there, if. Notice. That if thou shall confess with thy mouth, what? Or Jesus is your Lord. Now notice, he, what I want you to see, he mentions your mouth. What did he mention? See, you got to use your mouth. You got to confess his name with your mouth. You got to learn to say, Jesus is my Lord. If you do it, things will break loose for you. Look at the next verse. For with the heart man believes. But that's not enough to get things to break loose for you. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the what? Read it. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Now notice confession is made unto whatever you need. Because salvation literally means healing, rescue, wholeness, deliverance, protection. Whatever you want it to mean, salvation is an all-inclusive term. It doesn't just mean going to heaven. But notice you got to use your mouth to get some things to be released in your life. You got to do what? All right. Now, notice that. Let's just keep on reading. Notice, if you will now, look at verse 12. For there is no difference. God is no respect of anybody. For there is no difference between the Jew and the non-Jew. For the same Lord. See, he's Lord over the whole earth. For the same ruler, for the same master, for the same Lord over all. He's what? He's what? He's what? Rich unto who? Rich unto who? Rich unto who? All who do what? Hey! But you got to use your mouth. Now that word call there literally means to cry out. For help. All who cries out to him for help. So you got to believe he's able. You got to believe he's willing. You got to have faith in your heart. But it doesn't stop there. Then you got to release what's in your heart through your mouth. Amen. Amen. And notice he's rich. He's rich. He's rich under how many? All, All that do what? All. Notice, but you got to call on him. You got to open your mouth. I read those other verses to show you. Paul is talking about calling using your mouth. Glory to God. Well, I'm 
so thankful. The church I got saved in wasn't quiet. Glory to God. Oh, they taught me how to get to the Lord. They taught me how to get heaven to come down and lavish my life with nothing but goodness. Well, you see, your Bible says you have to call. Now listen, listen to me. How did Paul know this? When he got saved, God sent a disciple and told Paul, you call on him. Well, Paul knew how rich he was to him. Paul got saved. Paul got healed. Paul got filled. And Paul got called in the ministry. Right there, when he accepted the Lord and was told to call upon him, God lavished it. And Paul knew there was nobody as worse than him, you see. So now he says, hey, he'll be rich to all. All who do what? Look at the next verse, please. For whosoever, see, it doesn't matter who you are. For whosoever who shall call, whosoever shall call, shall cry out aloud, shall cry out aloud for help. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Notice it didn't say maybe, might, hope, shall, shall, shall be saved. Rescued, delivered, healed, hallelujah, shall. But you got to use your mouth. You got to learn to call. You got to learn to cry out aloud. Well, we're going to look at the word of God concerning these things, you see. Because they are true. There's nothing in your Bible that's not true. Your Bible lies about nothing. But it tells the truth about everything. And we just saw an amazing truth. Whosoever shall apply this principle shall receive the master's riches. Hallelujah. Notice if you will, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Woo! My God, I'm going to try not to shout. I'm going to try not to disturb your sleep. Ah, glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look, if you will, at verse 2. Are you all ready? Amen. Notice Paul is writing, Unto the church of God, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. Or you can say, unto the church of God, which is in Orlando on Ivy Lane. This is for the church of God. This is written for you and I. Unto the church. That belongs to God. Notice he says, to them. He's writing to them, to the saints, to them that are sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to be saints. With how many? Now notice with all the saints, not just in this location, but please listen. Those who are truly called of God, listen, those who are truly saints of the Most High, all over the world, we are taught to call upon his name. Hey, he said, I'm writing to you in Corinth, but this is with all the saints. This is everywhere saints call upon his name. Notice he says, with all the saints. That in every place, do what? Read it. Every place, all the saints, that's truly of the true household of God, that's truly been called for salvation by the grace of the mass. Listen, there is no quiet church when it's the true church of God. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Glory to God. Hey, glory. His house. His church. Now notice he says. Paul says, I'm writing to you all. But this is what all the saints do. In every place. They call upon the name of Jesus Christ. 
they call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Notice our Lord, both theirs and ours. He's the same Lord over everybody. I don't care if you're in China. I don't care if you're in Africa. I don't care if you're in Indonesia. I don't care if you're in Russia. If you're in the true church of God, if you're in the true saints of the Most High, everywhere the true church of God calls on the name of the Lord. Woo! Glory to God. Now look at the results, please, of the Corinthian church calling. Look at verse 4. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by who? Who did they call on? Jesus Say it louder. Jesus Notice and Jesus responded. Paul said because you called on him by Jesus Christ you've been lavished with abundant grace. Look at the next verse. That in everything you are what? Read it loud. In everything I've been enriched because the Bible says when you call upon the name of the Lord, he's rich unto you. He's been enriched. Paul said your life in everything has been enriched because you call. Well, God help lame, brain, stiff neck, proud Christians who haven't been taught to be a New Testament church. They live with so many of their needs unmet because they haven't learned how to call upon him. Are you all here? Now notice what your Bible says. That in everything, everything, you are enriched by him. In all utterance and in all what else? Hallelujah. Look at verse 7. So that you come behind in what? And no gift. That is no grace, no blessing, no impartation. You come behind in nothing. You come behind in nothing. No gift, no grace, no impartation. You come behind in nothing. Why? Because I've taught you. Like I taught all my other churches, Paul is saying. I taught you how to call on Jesus. I taught you how to use your mouth and say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, come. Jesus, woo, glory. Hallelujah. And you've been enriched by him. You come behind in no impartation. Well, you see, he's this way to anybody who will call. So when are you going to start calling? Hey, glory. When are you going to open your mouth and call on him with faith in your heart? Are y'all still in the house? Yeah. Yeah.